Hi, and this is the Silver Fox Hustle podcast, the football talk episodes. And uh, in the next uh, few episodes of the football talk, uh, we will be talking to a couple of SPL coaches and hopefully players. And we are going to do a preview of uh, the season uh, that is the Singapore Premier League season that's coming, uh, kicking off next, uh, probably in May, I think. And uh, yeah, so so the, the next few episodes of the Football Talk uh, episodes will be on uh, the SPL preview. Uh, before we go on, click on the subscribe button, the follow button. We are everywhere, uh, every podcast platforms, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, as well as YouTube. So click on the uh, preview or the subscribe button. Now, let's start off with the very first club that we are previewing and it's going to be Belsteer Khalsa. And today here uh, in the studios with me is the head coach, Mr. Peter Diru. Welcome to the podcast, Pete. Thanks for having me. Uh, it's it's always a, a pleasure. You know, I think we did uh, one episode uh, a couple of months ago and I had a, a wonderful chat about coaches and about you, obviously. But uh, today is all about Belsa Khalsa, uh, a preview of uh, the season that's coming up and uh, you are the very first club uh, we are doing. And before we start talking about that, how was your holidays? Uh, it's, it's good to be first for once, but uh, <laughs> no, holidays was, uh, was good. Uh, uh, and and uh, obviously uh, it's going to be a long season, so mm. it was a, it was a welcome break and uh, and uh, and we're fresh again, yeah. Yeah, very fresh. Yep. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. So so let's get uh, started. We're going to talk about the, the the coming season, but before that, there's a little a summary of what happened last season. Now you guys finished fourth ahead of clubs like Geelang and Haugang. Uh, you guys got sixty goals, thirteen goals more than Tampines, who finished third. Uh, but you guys also considered 71 goals, which is the second league is defence after the Young Lions. Now, the funny part is, this is, the, this is the interesting stat, yeah, Pete, right? You are the only team not to have drawn any game in the league, right? Yeah. And you, you won 12, you lost 12. It's like, you know, equal. Uh, how would you sum up your season? Uh, well, first of all... Um um, I was very proud of uh, of the progress and the growth that that, that we have made uh, compared to uh, the years before, um, and, and, and not so much in terms of where we finish and that we finish uh, above Gailang and, and Haugang. In the end, um, uh, for me, it was more the growth and, and the fact that uh, the football that we played. Yeah, and and I I think you you spot on. You know, I think you spot on, especially about the performance bit and the the brand of football that you guys played. You guys were expensive, uh, you know, playing brilliant attacking football. Obviously, scoring loads of goals in the process. And you know, we we can't you know veer from the fact that you guys also consider the most goals. And and is that by be because of the way you guys play, the the way you guys set up, or it's what was the reason? No, no, um, but there is a, obviously a relation. Uh, mm. If you play uh, attacking football and you you, you want to um, try, uh, you want to try to be dominant in the half of the opponent, you know you give away space. Yeah. Uh, so you are vulnerable, uh, let's say in in the counter attack. But so there is maybe a relation. But as soon as you know that you're vulnerable in the counter attack. It's not a matter of going to plan B because then you wouldn't score uh, that, mm. that amount of goals anymore. It's a, it's more uh, a matter of anticipating better on your vulnerability. So what happens the first three seconds after you lose a ball? How stretched are you when you lose the ball? And I think in these aspects, uh, we could have done a lot better. Uh, uh, and, and always when it's about uh, conceding goals, people look at a, a goalkeeper or look at, uh, at defenders. But in the way we play, our defending starts uh, up front. Yeah. And uh, so... Uh, yeah, and definitely um, that was not uh, of the standard uh, uh, that it should be. What people probably don't know that is in the, the last six or seven games, these stats drastically, uh, uh, drastically dropped and they could have dropped more. Uh, because I think we were also a little bit unlucky. Uh, I, I remember a game in the cup, in the cup, where mm. we lose from uh, Haugang three two, yeah. a game that we probably should have won. But in that in that game, we only uh, conceded I think three shots on goal. Yeah. And that was a lot less than uh, than uh, than before. Yeah. Um, because I think in in three rounds before uh, against Haugang, mm. that would have been maybe. Uh, 
uh, 20 shots, maybe not all on target, yeah. but it would be, would be let's say, 10, 11 on target. So right. we definitely improved. We also uh, changed the formation a bit. Um, and then probably got a little bit unlucky that yeah. that, that every shot still flies in, <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah. because those figures don't lie, but yeah. the other shots don't lie either, and yeah. and they showed me that we actually got better. You know, it, it's it's uh, interesting that you spoke about the vulnerabilities, you know, and we of course we talk about the moments in football, and oh, you know, right, as a coach, I'm I'm so uh, intrigued by by the chat that we're having, right? So we talked about the uh, probably. You are you guys are more vulnerable when you are in possession because then in transition you get hit uh, on the break and yeah. and obviously we're talking about the rest defense and 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 whatnot positioning of players even when you are in possession of the ball right so uh, have you been working on on in stuff like that yeah probably yeah last time this well also last year um, but also um, you know in this in this preseason it has been. Uh, um, yeah, quite a quite a topic because um, what I noticed in um, in Southeast Asia that um, people think people feel safer when they drop deep, mm. but if you attack and you are not confident enough as a last line to be compact. Yeah. Uh, and I I understand because the position of football becomes harder when you're compact. Yeah. But you need to be compact when you lose the ball. Yeah. Um, so that means also that we need to move it quicker and better uh, in, in possession. But um, uh, because you can't be stretched when you lose the ball. That's as simple as that. Exactly. Even if there is uh, immediate pressure on the ball, so you stop the first ball going forward, if that first uh, press is not protected, uh, then, then then good teams will still play through you. Yeah. Uh, so we need to be confident enough to not uh, actually walk back and protect our goal. No, yeah. we need to protect the press. Right, right, right. Th that's a, a very, very good point. Now let's start off with the players that you brought in, you know, and, and what has influenced those decisions in bringing these players in. Uh, was, it, was it also a case of looking at the weaknesses and how we can improve and that's why we got these players? Yeah, it, it, it was all about that mm. um, um, I think after uh, last season for me it was pretty clear if we want to grow uh, what areas do we need to look for yeah. in terms of the football yeah and then you look at uh, the, the players that yeah. can do that and the players that we have that you maybe think there is um, you know there is no growth in there anymore mm. and, and maybe they need to be replaced yeah um, but also with new players i i, I look at uh, obviously at the at, at the, the specific skills that they bring and that yeah. we need to to get better mm. um, but for me um, as much uh, important is uh, is the attitude and the mm. motivation why they want to come to balaster Kalsa. Let's let's talk about a, a few players that you brought in, you know, and and uh, I think one is Amir Rodin. We got Harith Kanadi who came in a little bit uh, late last season. Goalkeepers, uh, uh, goalkeeper Hafiz as well uh, from Geelang. Let's speak about them a little bit. Let's start start off with Hafiz in goal. Uh, he he probably I've I've watched him and commentated on games as well. He's got great reflexes, you know, and and he probably and how would he fit in into your game? Um, well. Uh, if first and foremost, uh, a goalkeeper has probably been uh, the biggest headache for me because uh, you sort of don't want to go uh, with a foreigner there. Um, that's one thing. So then you look at the at the market in the the keepers market in uh, in um, in Singapore, uh, and then you look at the playing style because uh, yeah. need that needs to fit and. Um, yeah, for me, then it wasn't really uh, uh, much of a uh, headache in terms of for us available uh, mm. in a player who probably can bring that to this squad or add yes. that to this squad is Hafiz. Mm. Uh, you need to be confident in, in, in if you want to play the way we play. Mm. Hafiz is confident. He even makes his mistakes with confidence. He doesn't look back. He only looks forward after a mistake. And I think that's uh, that's a very important uh, aspect of. of a mental skill for a goalkeeper. Uh, he's good with his feet, mm. um, which helps us not only switch the play or link up to the other side uh, through our central defenders or our six. We can even use a goalkeeper and be confident mm. uh, that that he will deal with that pro uh, properly. And um, 
And also, um, when we have the ball, uh, it means there is a lot of space uh, in uh, behind our central defenders. You need a goalkeeper who, can, who has a lot of game awareness, who can read the game and, yeah. and knows that every ball over the top should be mine. As simple as that. Yeah. Uh, uh, and and he is very confident in his positioning as well. I, I, yeah, I think I think you're right about the confidence. It's key, isn't it? And especially in the way you guys play. And you talk about uh, the balls over the top. He's got to sweep, and his starting yeah. position is always the most important with goalkeepers. If yeah. you want to do that, and yeah, I, I think he brings that to the team. How about uh, Amir Rulden? Well, um, Amir Rulden is um, obviously um, when you look at Balasjek Kals and you look at the. Um, uh, the available budget, uh, we got to be extremely creative as well in, in the choices we make. Um, Amarulden is, is a player that can uh, as a uh, can play as a 9, uh, maybe even as a 10. He's been out of the game for quite a while. Um, so, um, But I think that he has the potential to play in, in the way we want to play. Mm. And um, um, yeah, the same for Harit. Uh, I think Harit is an interesting player. We want to play a little bit uh, different this year in terms of formation, um, and we need a, a fullback uh, who can more or less also play as a um, as a left winger. Right. Uh, and um, yeah, to me, Harith has all the characteristics of of, of a modern uh, fullback or wingback, mm -hmm. uh, like on the other side, uh, Darren has. Uh, but but obviously, in the last couple of years. Um, didn't uh, make a lot of uh, minutes in the SPL, uh, but I'm very confident in his in his qualities. Yeah, I think his breakout year was in Geelang when he started off with Geelang and then went over to the Young Lions. I think Harith is a good good uh, addition to your side, and yeah. obviously got to watch with his uh, you know this this bit because he's, he's tend to be a little bit uh, uh, overzealous and stuff. I mean, Rudin as well. I think he's good uh, as long as he stays injury free. You know, I I think that's the most important. I'm Rudin. You know, he's he's uh, great potential as well. I picked up one thing that you just said. And without revealing too much, you said that you're gonna or probably tweak the way you play or the the, the style. What 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 is it? <laughs> no, not not the style. Um, but uh, if if people have uh, uh, have paid attention in the in in the cup, um, it is something that I wanted to do earlier, mm. uh, but for different reason uh, because. Um, for different reasons, and one of them was uh, in a lot of injuries for, yeah. for Ikram. Uh, I could never um, um, play uh, in that formation. Uh, yeah. We only did it uh, uh, a couple of times in the, in the, in the cup. And, uh, and I was actually quite pleased with it because we didn't really compro compromise on yeah. our uh, attacking, yeah. but defensively, uh, especially how the rest defense is set up when we lose it. And I'm not talking about distances, but yeah. uh, how, they are f how the formation is in the back when we lose the ball. Right. It requires a little bit less from our fullbacks. Okay. Uh, um, so, and I don't want to become too technical, yep, but yep. Uh, in in rest defense with a f with four, if you play like we, uh, let's say we attack on the right hand side, our right fullback will always be involved. He will always be mm. in front of the ball when you lose it. That means the opposite fullback needs to come inside. But as soon as you switch it, he needs to go, and the other the other one needs to come in. Mm. Uh, if you if we tend to lose the ball in those moments, we become vulnerable. Mm. And when you play uh, with wing backs. Um, you always have those three uh, players yeah. central when you lose it. So yeah. it might sound me more attacking because it sounds like 3-4-3. Three, three. But as a matter of fact, when you lose the ball, um, you're yeah. better positioned. Exactly. That's, uh, that's, that's uh, you know, for those of you who are watching and who's listening to this, you, you can try to figure out what's, what's happening there with the Bell State this season. But yeah. But now, I want to speak about the foreigners a little bit after this. But uh, let's talk a little bit about Daniel and Ho Wai Lun. I think these two players, I think if, if, if anyone who's been a Ballastia fan for the past couple of years or, or, or not, they look at a team sheet this season, it's going to be a team sheet without Wai Lun and without Daniel. Now speak a little bit about them. Are they going to be a, a big, big loss to Ballastia? No, I think they will because um, they both um, had a lot of impact, mm. um, impact last year. Um, but at the same time, it, it's the way uh, football works, and um, 
and uh, we want to grow as a team uh, as well and um, obviously both of them I would love to have uh, kept with, uh, with, with the club uh, but when you have a season like we had last year and the budget mm -hmm. is not going to change. Obviously, it's going to be a massive challenge during the winter break because everybody wants more salary. Yeah. And uh, because, you know, the club has been successful. I understand that. I've been a player too. So that, that's how it works. Uh, but it means that if you still want to get better, um, that, um, that you can't uh, raise everybody's salary yeah. uh, to the expectations they might have of it because the replacements of other players yeah. um, also you need to uh, t mm. uh, take care of and uh, so yeah it's been a, a massive puzzle and a massive challenge during the winter break but i was um, i was um, actually very happy with the the effort and the mm. ambition that the club showed during the break so um um, very confident looking forward yeah you know you, you're right about you know you, you talk about the club with the same budget and, and whatever but you know I think you, you got to give hat, uh, hats out to the, the management there in terms of you know you got to be creative as well when you're trying to get players in and, and you know trying to fit players in in there especially with uh, missing out on players or not not missing out yeah, and, and, and probably to add to that you can't look at it with uh, uh, too much emotion. Yeah. Of course, we want to keep Daniel and Waloon, mm. but at what cost? Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Yes, uh, yes. We still want to grow right. as a club and as a team as well. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I like it when you say it uh, during the winter break. You, you mean the monsoon break? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let, now, let's talk about the, the, the foreigners that has come in, right? And, and listen, the foreigners really, really excite it, they, they really excite me. You know, if they don't excite the, the fans out there, you know, I, something's wrong. Because uh, Alan Koza stays, uh, Sugita, obviously. Now, the, the, the two big ones, at least, or actually three big ones, are the Fukashiro from uh, Elbrex, Tanaka, obviously, for LCS, but he was the top scorer the previous year, and Ismail Sasi, the, the, the former Tunisian international. They, they, they are re really top class foreigners i gotta say you know and obviously judging from uh, fukashiro last season he's been very very skillful tanaka we we all know what he can do obviously uh bad luck last season how wh what do you think about the foreigners that you brought in and the thinking behind bringing them in well um first of all you know that when uh jumbo leaves and uh and royal leave that um that's more than half of your of your goals uh, leaving so um, um so obviously you need to bring back players that uh, in this in the same kind of uh, of playing style yep. uh, will be able to score these goals yeah. as well and, yeah. and create those opportunities and i'm i'm actually confident that uh, uh, that uh, kodai and and riku can do that uh, Riku is maybe a little bit a name where people are a little bit less familiar uh, with because for different reasons he only started a couple of games uh, last mm. year. He was never really a starter, but his numbers are incredible and his work rate off the ball is second to none. Yeah. Um, yeah, and Kodai uh, obviously had a, a tough year. Uh, but he is not only there because he was top scorer of the league. He is also there because of his work rate mm. of the ball. Mm. And um, he is he's good in playing away from the ball. He's good at playing in the ball. He's face, facing his own goal. Uh, doesn't complicate things. It's one touch and he moves. Yeah. Uh, so he actually, both of them also make us a little bit more quicker when we break a line or when we, uh, you know, receive the ball between lines. Lines yep. in the in the final third, yep. um, rather than delaying, uh, actually mm. speed the game up. Which I think in the last phase uh, you need to, you really need to see, even as if you're sitting in the stand, you yep. need to see that it goes from second to third gear or your highest gear. Yeah. Uh, and and um, they definitely don't delay the play. And uh, and and then um, yeah, very happy with them. And and Sassi, yeah. uh, um, I also looked at the motivation because uh, to be honest uh, with. Kobe, I have been back and forth for almost a month because she actually wanted to leave Singapore. Mm. Um, but um, 
um, yeah, then he came back to me and um, and and he um, yeah he looked at uh, the way Balestia played and and stuff like that and um, yeah and and he really wanted to come to this club because uh, at some point we weren't the only club but uh, I knew that if he stays in Singapore it will be with us mm. uh, so very proud of that um, yeah and Sassi different story um, had a rough two years. Uh, but that is, uh, I think, uh, for me, um, and he, he explained it to me, his agent explained it to me, uh, which all made sense to me that he didn't play uh, that much mm. games in, in the last two years. But his motivation to come to the club and the 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 eagerness that was in his um, when I was sitting, when yeah. I was having this conversation and also uh, Darwin. Um, um, because yeah, for me, foreigners are very, uh, very important. Everybody will say yeah, obviously, because they they can make the difference. Yeah, but they they have a massive influence in a dressing room. Absolutely. I've been a player as well, and if I play with a foreigner in a dressing room who doesn't work harder than the rest, um, and and they, these guys are examples uh, for um, for everybody in, yeah. the, in the work they put in on and off the field, yeah. and for me that's important. Uh, the uh, besides the football that they bring. Uh, they're good characters. They have the right motivation to come to to want to come to this club. Um, yeah. So yes, uh, again, also uh, they're um, very much looking forward to, to next uh, season. F- football wise, what does Sassi bring in terms of positioning? What does he bring to the to the team? Nah, he, he can score goals. Yeah. Uh, he's also a player that um, doesn't shy uh, in 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 doing his work off mm. the ball. Um, he can play a little bit more as a uh, modern winger. He's not an out-and-out winger. Yeah. He's somebody who can play between lines, who can yeah. play in the ball, can play away from the ball, um, and, and uh, you know, making a run without the ball, yeah. stuff like that. Uh, um, um, so, yeah, uh, I think in the way um, we want to play, he would be a perfect fit, as would uh, uh, would be Rico and, and, and Kodai. And, and with uh, the other two foreigners, Massa and, and Alan, we already knew. Yeah. Uh, Alan was really a priority for me mm. uh, because we, um, we were about to, uh, uh, to actually lose him. Uh, but I'm I'm happy that we could uh, could make that that work uh, yeah. again. Thanks to to the to the management, yeah. uh, because I think he's he has been one of the most underestimated players last year, in my opinion. Nice, Pete. Uh, I, I'll try not to annoy you, but I, I probably am gonna with the next question. Right on <laughs> on paper on paper, Belstier has strengthened right in in the attacking department. I'll I'll say this right. Uh, you know, negating the loss of. Jumbo and Daniel and uh, Taniguchi, right? Defend, but defensively, is is this gonna be a case of you score three and we'll score four? And and have have you strengthened the defense bit? Um, yeah, I think we have, and and I think that's also a little bit related to uh, to <coughs> formation. Mm. But um, uh, what you say uh, before that is kind of true because uh, in the way we play which costs a tremendous amount of energy uh, it helps if you score a few goals uh, <laughs> when you go into the last 20 minutes because yeah. at some point the distances no matter what they will become a little bit bigger mm. but the wet, uh, the game should already be yeah. uh, hours by then uh, right. I, I sometimes compare it to uh, uh, Tottenham Hotspur yeah. uh, the coach is a good friend of mine and yeah. we have quite similar philosophies mm. on football and when i look at them it, it's the same it's so much energy but yeah it's even even in england singapore is even harder yeah. but to maintain that intensity i'm not saying we're saying at the same playing at the same intensity but yeah to maintain that yeah. for 90 minutes uh, is incredibly hard yeah, but yeah. we strive for that but yeah. i'm not stupid at yeah. some point uh, there will be uh, gaps here and there yeah um, and it helps then if you have a, a little bit of a buffer, yeah. Yeah, and and you you spoke about Ange right from from Spurs, and and the reason interview he spoke about he only wants players who wants to play for the club, you know. And I think you said it just before this anyway, you know about. The, yeah, I mean, uh, I mean we worked and... together for four years, mm. so uh, even our language is sometimes <laughs> quite similar. Yeah. Uh, we work with the national teams. He was yeah. uh, he was doing the senior national teams, but very much involved with the, nice. the teams coming through we played the same way and, and have a lot of similar similar beliefs on, on not only football but also outside of football so 
know, uh, yeah, I, I like to watch them because, uh, yeah, there, there's so much similarities. Right. How has preseason been, by the way? You know, I, I think it's been, I, I don't know, you know, it, uh, from someone looking uh, looking in, you know, it has been like a stop-start kind of thing and it's a little yeah. bit too long maybe because the, the, the season is starting a little bit later on. How has it been so far? Nah, it, it's been good, but it is a challenge because yeah. um, it actually reminded me of when I went uh, or and came to Australia um, 15 years ago when the competition was only seven months mm. and the pre-season was, uh, was three, four months. And I, I was always thinking, you know, what, what the hell are you going to do in three, four months? And now I'm facing the same yeah. challenge. Uh, we every now and then have given them a couple of days or a week off to, you know, you get fitter, but you also got to make sure that you stay fresh uh, mentally. Yeah. Uh, because, yeah, I've, I've been there as a player after six or eight weeks in pre-season, maximum of, of eight weeks. You, you want to start, you yeah. want to go out there. And, right. and, and, and then, uh, but after six weeks, you only, the only thing you know is it's another 12 weeks. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that is sort of... Um, uh, frustrating, but we also deliberately um, uh, choose to to start at a reasonable time because we knew we wanted to take these friendly seriously because we knew yeah. uh, we were helping the national team coach with that, mm. uh, and I think that's important because uh, if we would have been selfish, if I would have been selfish, mm. we would have started later. Right, right. Um, so, um, so it's just something that you then have to deal with. And, and it's good. It's another challenge for, for uh, the uh, one that I've never faced before. So yeah. uh, it, it is what it is. I nice. mean, there's no point in complaining about it. you got to deal with it. Well, just, just judging from the, the, the preseason games so far, friendly games and, you know, uh, everything that you've been through for the past few weeks or months even with the players, right? The place that you got got in as well. Uh, any players to look out for, do you think, from your side that, you know, you think that could be maybe who hasn't broken into you know, things and, and maybe could be a breakout year or, you know, some, some place that you think that, you know, we should be looking out for? Well, um, you know, I, I don't... I'm, I'm not a big fan of singling mm. out... Uh, uh, players but uh, maybe uh, maybe should make an uh, an exception for once um, when I look at um, the expectations that I had of uh, of Jordan last year mm. and the way he played yeah. I'm thinking okay uh, sort of see the potential um, but when I now look at him in preseason and the the, the it certainly things are now clicking uh, then it would really surprise me if he wouldn't make a uh, 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 yeah. uh, or get a call up for the national team. Uh, yeah. To be honest, uh, yeah. and and hopefully uh, there will be uh, two or three more of our team. Uh, yeah. I think the potential is there. Uh, we haven't even spoken about uh, uh, Tajeli. Yeah. I know he has a little bit of a um, uh, <laughs> reputation, um, but um, if he maintains 100% focused yeah. on, on the things that he can control in terms of his football, um, there's not a lot of better players in the league, to be honest. You're, you're absolutely right. You know, I think with these players, they just probably need, you know, the, the guidance that is required. And, you know, I, I'm a fan of Jordan. I think with, with uh, the, the stature that he has as well, physicality, the size, the, the, the height, and, and obviously you take that apart, and you break it down. Technically, he's good on the ball as well. Good passer. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, I I think this. Uh, I'm a fan, and, and uh, hopefully he he breaks out as well this season. And and good luck with the national team. You know, if if he gets uh, called up. Well, we we we're coming to the end of of the preview with uh, Belse Kalsa. I can't let you go without s certain questions, and that is number one, your goal for the season. You know, and 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 targets that you've set for your team, or maybe the team has set out for themselves. And uh, yeah, what, what are the goals? And what will success be for you at the end of the season? Yeah, well, you know, I, I accept that uh, people might, might think uh, that I um, am boring when I, uh, when I answer questions like this because I don't like to uh, say, oh, we want to get better than last year, so last year fourth, so if we can, uh, can become third or whatever. For me, um, I would be happy if we uh, continue to grow and get better at what we do. Uh, 
uh, of course we want to challenge uh, the top and with the top I don't mean the top four I mean number one that's why you start a competition we want to win this competition and whether that uh, that is in the end um, um, realistic or not we'll see but then we evaluate in terms of have we grown uh, have we given these uh, supporters of this club uh, 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 Belasia Calsa to be proud of? Uh, then you can still be successful. But what does it mean if you're third and and you're still you haven't really improved and you're 20 points away from mm. the top? Mm. You might have uh, you're one step higher than uh, that. So so for me, it's all about the process and growth. And of course, that would be baseless if it's not connected to uh, a res an end result. Yeah. Uh, because that's why we play. It's it's a uh, it's it's a subjective thing, you know. If you ask any, is, any, any any coach, but uh, you, you, we talk about at the, at the the end of the season, we talk about results, and now you guys finish fourth. So probably, <laughs> uh, again, being annoying you, you're gonna you're gonna finish third probably. Uh, that that could be the aim. Uh, your points total was thirty six, I think. More than that, obviously, would be would be good. Yeah, but, um, you, you know, when you look at last year, I think, uh, yeah, I, I just answered a question. I, I yeah. was quite happy. But at the same time, there's a lot of room for improvement mm. in terms of football. But I also said, I think last year, I want to challenge the top teams in the league. Yeah. We have not done that last year. Uh, as a matter of fact, we only won one game against the top mm. three. Uh, the, the, why we finished fourth is because we won all the other games, uh, mostly. Yeah. Um, uh, and, and for this year, I think we... Uh, I want uh, Lion City Sailors to come to Bishan and be, uh, and be scared yeah. and, and, and be, uh, be worried. Yeah. Uh, and not only Lion City Sailors, uh, because I think uh, Tampanese... It has as much quality as Lion City Sailors has, yeah, in and, my and, opinion. Yeah, and, and you said this just now, you know, you, you probably finish in that fourth position because you beat the other teams and then did not probably do well in, in against the top three teams and probably the progress would be to maintain that and beat the other teams yeah. uh, at the top and yeah. and change that, that losses uh, column yeah. to probably draws first and then into the wins, <laughs> you know, because that's zero draws, right? Yeah, it, it, that that is in in a way a, a, a real fascinating stat from last season. And uh, any uh, you know messages up to the fans of Ballester? I, I can say truly, say, I'm not a, I'm not a, a Ballester fan or an LCS fan or whatever. I'm I'm, just, I'm neutral, but I have to say for Ballester fans out there last season, I think they were very happy with you know how. Let's forget about the fourth position. I think you guys played probably, you know, very good attacking football and you're exciting to watch, right? So, so any, you know, messages to the fans out there for this season? No, well, first of all, I am I'm very proud that uh, that more people to come come and watch uh, watch our games and and we hope uh, or not we hope because that means that there might be doubt. I think and I'm I'm sure that we yeah. uh, we will make them proud again this year even in games that we will lose they will see a team that fights till the end and doesn't give up because uh, I don't expect any less so um, uh, I think our play players should not expect any less from us and uh, and I hope we make them proud again and uh, and um, yeah, give them a good season and uh, and a club that they uh, that they want to be part of. Thanks, Pete, uh, for for being here. You know, I think it has been a, a wonderful. Chat. It's always intriguing talking to you about football. You know, I think we can go on and on. It's uh, thirty or forty minutes is not uh, enough for us here, but uh, we got to go. That is the very first uh, episode of football talk episode with uh, the SPL preview that that has been uh, uh, with this has been with Peter uh, De Roof talking about. Belsia Khalsa and their chances this season and uh, we'll see you next time for the next episode of uh, the SPL preview. This has been the Silver Fox Hustle Podcast. Cheers.